Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah? Yeah, that looks alright. Before I like to say, we're not medical experts. This is just our own experience, yeah. okay? We're not telling other people what they should do. We're just saying about what works for us. As to exercising, as when I do my stretches, I also do core muscle strengthening as well and do some muscle strengthening exercises that the osteopath has given me to do. Walking? Yeah. That's my exercise. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so pacing is so important when it comes to chronic fatigue. It's pacing in everyday life or pacing in particular activities like exercise. Just start off gradual. So I think that's what's worked for me. When you just go full into it, well, when I've just gone full into I it, I'm due to have a flare up. Being in a class for me was ridiculous. Yeah. Could, I could keep up. It's just the after effects. That's the same with me. Oh. That's why I stopped yeah. going to... I used to go to classes, I've tried Pilates and I've tried yoga. What I needed was the instructor to curb me. Because if I'm left to my own devices, <laughs> I will injure myself because I want to keep up with everybody else. But there's things that I just know, right? Don't try and do sit-ups. Don't be silly. Having the right instructor in a class because I used to feel really conscious especially if, even if I had an instructor it would say all right don't do that and I'm oh, everybody's watching me or I've got to do these different exercises now I'm sort of a bit like I don't care yeah because it's like you've got to do the baby activity yeah but you need to do that baby activity yeah otherwise you have to break up body afterwards when yeah. everybody's left the class and you're at home yeah. So I would completely go all out. I used to do like kickboxing. Mm -hmm. The legs could kick. So, sometimes it would come out, the hip would come out. So just <laughs> get back in and firm it. And like the stretching. So I can remember I could just do the splits really well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I could do the splits. Do, touch whatever it is. Yeah. And, and the, the, without expressing to the teacher, that this is what my body naturally does. This yeah. is because I'm super fit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I damaged myself a lot. So I would have you know, like a good class and then a good flare up. Mm -hmm. So even swimming, after I had my surgery on my shoulder, the worst thing ever, I used to swim probably three times a week. Mm -hmm. And I nearly drowned the first time I went back to swimming. Right. And just because I thought I could do what I was doing yeah, before yeah. the surgery, jump in at the deep end and go for it. Now I physically nearly drowned. Yeah, no, I can't manage swimming anymore. No, not can I. Yeah. The, the rotation on the shoulder is, is ridiculously yeah. painful. I even tried to do the breaststroke, and I've given that up. Which I do. I would love because there's a pleasure in swimming. Mm. I would love to go back. But it is a case of walking in the pool. Yeah, that's it. That's all I can Maybe do. Flap her arm around. Yeah, because yeah, I used to do aqua aerobics. I used to that. swim. I used to be a really good swimmer when I was younger. Mm -hmm. But so. even I went back to swimming after after I couldn't do aqua aerobics anymore. And the osteopath said to me, "Okay, just um, he said to me, walk up and down in the pool." But me being me. I can't just walk up and down in the pool. Can, so I tried right, to yeah. swim. Yeah, no, but psychologically, I'm not walking up and down in the pool. What's that going to do? And I just felt very, is that thing about feeling conscious, I need to get rid of this pride. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> yeah. shopping, I still have pride. Yeah. So walking up and down in, so when I when I do swim, that because I have problems with my knees as well as my back, swimming just doesn't work for me. Whether, no matter what stroke it is, it's too much. So, literally walking up and down in the pool. That's mm. all I can manage, which is damn boring. Yeah, so, definitely for me, it's the at home, home, I do my stretches. Yeah, Within that, oh, the, 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 yeah, no. So it's, and that's the thing that would put me mm. off as well. It's the, whole, it's the whole process of going to the swimming baths, getting changed. All of that takes a lot of energy. Mm going in a pool to walk up and down then you've got to come out hair's wet so then yeah right getting changed again going it's to walk just up and down in the pool just i'd rather go. just go for a walk yeah so i think for me i pace myself so as i haven't been walking for a long time i'm just going to do 
short walks. I'm not going to try and go around the whole park like I was doing a year ago. I'm going to go up there, five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, and come home. And then build that up gradually until I feel like I can manage it. But yeah. I'm still at home, even though I don't do them as often as I should, because I've had a few flare-ups over the past few months. So I've kind of not been as consistent with my stretches. Yeah, uh, do you think it's a good idea to do the stretches on your flare-up? Sometimes. Sometimes I need to stretch. I don't do stretches as much as I would normally when I'm not in a flare-up. Is that because um, of brain fog or because you physically can't? Both. It's okay. just too painful, I'm too tired, fatigue mm. <laughs> basically, mm. and sometimes I just forget because I'm just in so much pain, I don't think, oh, Cassandra, do your stretches. Mm -hmm. But when I do remember, sometimes, depending on what kind of flare-up I'm having, because all my flare-ups are different, uh, I will do moderate stretches. And that does help because, as we know, lack of movement is not good for us either. Mm -hmm. Even though it's difficult. Really got to test out what works for you kind of got to do that trials and experiments and again what might work this week might not work next week yeah that's really sad but there must be some hope okay there's no consistency that's that that is i think what makes it's me for more frustrated it's just there's no consistency mm. i don't know what i'm going to be from one day to the next one week to the next so what might work this week might not work next week post I've got. We don't know how we're going to be in the next five days. Yeah, that's right. So let alone a day, we don't know how we're going to be. So mm. I think that's the, that's probably the most frustrating part about EDS. Mm. It's not knowing how you're going to be from one minute to the next. No, that's, this angle's not flattering. Can you, should you drag it to you a bit more? Mm. Can you not flattering to me? <laughs> <laughs> Chest. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't do a thing. Okay. That's what I want to do. Alright. Alright then. Uh, yes. Uh,